Welcome to the first episode of The Silver Lining with your boy, Randy Silver. You like what I did there? You asked, I delivered. You all been loving the YouTube shorts I put out, the one minute highlights around sports, talking head videos, giving you the insight. Many people have reached out to me and asked, can I create longer form videos, two, three, four minutes so you can watch more in depth, diving deeper into it versus these quick highlights. So that's where we're at today. I'm starting the silver lining. So I'm going to be able to dive into three, four, five minute long monologues for you, diving into the content that you want to know happening in sports. These videos can come out on a daily basis, maybe every couple days. I'll pull things together. If something's breaking happen, I'll make sure to get it out ASAP. And that's where we're at today. So please like and subscribe so you continue to get this content. If you haven't seen me before, welcome to the channel. Please subscribe. And we're going to dive into what's happening that matters. And it's the biggest thing happening in college sports today, which is conference realignment. It is absolutely shaking up the whole United States. So let's dive into it. Why is this happening? It's because it's all about the Benjamins, baby. They just want the money. Conferences are really shelling out dollars. And they're getting these dollars from the media deals they're getting. The longer media deal, the bigger the dollar you're going to get. Right now, the Pac-12 conference media deal ends in 2024. So this is the last season. They have not been able to secure a new deal, which means that conf uh, the colleges are out on their own trying to secure what's best for their future because the Pac-12 does not have their future secured right now. That started the whole dominoes effect, which began, let's we switch, with the UCLA and USC leaving the Pac-12 a year and a half, two years ago, announcing they were going to go to the Big Ten with all the Midwest and some East schools. That started the domino effect, which we're going to come back to this map in a second. This is huge for the Big Ten because you get the second biggest media market in the world, Los Angeles. Both schools, not just one, both schools big for UCLA and USC. Now their games where they've been mainly in the evenings most likely are now going to be probably East Coast time more. So that means that they're going to get a bigger market to watch, more national news around them versus they've been siloed in the Pacific. This uh, isn't just for football, of course. This is the whole sports program. Any sport the school is going to be changing over. So are these people really student athletes anymore or are they professional athletes in college? Because student athletes could go to Rutgers, could go to Penn State, could go to Maryland on a Wednesday for a Thursday swim meet, and then swim meet in Iowa on Saturday, go back, and then next week have to go back out. Any sport, like, mm, come on, we know where the money's at. So we'll get to Washington, Oregon in a second. The next time in the fall was Colorado. Deion Sanders, Deion Sanders, excuse me, mound up, brought the school over back to. The Big 12, where they were before they moved to the Pac-12. So now Colorado moved over. A big fuss was made. You lost three schools. Pac-12 couldn't get their media deal. And then today, the seismic, the seismic news that happened, Washington and Oregon are going to the Big 10. So now four schools are gone from the Pac-12. That chain reaction made Arizona State, Arizona, and Utah leave for the Big 12. That's where we're at today. At least these geographically look a little bit better. UCF, outlier, still college athlete, professional athlete, what's happening here? It's all about the money. In terms of the schools, we'll go back really quick. I got a bunch of photos for you. The Pac-12 pays the, out four out of five schools in terms of money to its schools. So USC, UCLA want to compete on the national level to win these major trophies in the biggest college sports. They're not able to, they feel like, because they don't have as much money to be able to help out their programs, potentially NIL money to give to students, et cetera, et cetera. So they're looking at it from money aspect. So let's continue on. How is this affecting the ACC? Nothing has happened right now. They're still where they're at. You can see they're in the South with the Northeast. However, Florida State did come out a couple of days ago and say, hey, we're not getting enough money from the ACC. They're not going to give us the money we need to compete as well. We're the biggest brand they feel, which fair enough, they're probably top two. It's either them in Miami throwing Notre Dame, but they're more of an independent. But Florida State said they're going to leave eventually if they don't get the deals that they need as well. Next to the ACC is the SEC. They've had a major conference alignment in the past couple of years as well. Texas 
and Oklahoma are moving from the Big 12 to the SEC. Why? Money, money, money. But then moving over, this left the gap in the Big 12 where they started looking for schools, and that's where they pulled Colorado. Now they have more schools. They pulled BYU initially as well. So they've really tried uh, UCF in Florida. So they've really tried to make sure they can fill that gap that Texas and Oklahoma left. But they're a big brand, especially where they are in Austin and in Oklahoma City. There are no professional sports teams. They are the one attraction in town. SEC is going to continue to be the powerhouse and money, especially in football. So they may add more people. Maybe eventually comes SEC takes over ACC teams and whatnot. But right now, if you see, they're sitting pretty. So let's move on. Now we're looking at the Big East. Big East is known as the basketball conference, not that big in football. They're all centered in the East, not that bad. Where we're at right now is what the Pac-12 is currently. Obviously, after today, no more. They will all be here for their final season. They're going to all leave after 2024. So go see a Pac-12 sport. This will be the last time you'll see this conference together. And honestly, these 12 teams together, very, very unlikely. One cool thing that came out, though, you know, Oregon State, Oregon, big, big interstate game. Washington State, Washington, big interstate game. Cal, Stanford, Cal USC, Cal UCLA, Stanford USC, Stanford UCLA, Arizona, Arizona State. They said that they're going to try to keep them together, especially in the terms of Oregon, Oregon State. Since they already left Washington, Washington State, they already left. They're going to keep them together and have these games as a, a non-conference game, which is big. The students deserve it. The communities deserve it. These games need to happen. What could happen is you have the Mountain West right here. These are 11 schools. The four schools left in the Pac-12 right now, you have Oregon State, Washington State, Cal and Stanford. Maybe these combine together. You know, it's not the best for the four Pac-12 schools. These are smaller. These schools will have to raise their level of play and they will get better athletes if they become a Power 5 conference because of the combining. But this could be an option for them coming forward. And you still have the regional uh, the regional uh, rivalries going on. And you'll make new ones based off of the new games happening. So what does this mean? The Pac-12 has four schools right now. The Big 12 has 16 schools. And the Big 10 has 18 schools. Hmm. I wonder if this means that they're going to change their names. Hopefully. Hopefully it would make sense, right? Mm -hmm. Deion Sanders, when he came out about Colorado leaving because of the money... He got a lot of persecution in the media, a lot of people talking ish towards him and about the mindset. And what happened? Some of the schools that talked ish are now doing the same thing. So who got the last lap? Mount up. We'll see how they do this season and moving forward. Some statements for you to be aware of. Pac-12 obviously is very sad. This is their official statement on the conference. The history, the traditions being gone. They're working to see what they can do moving forward. Pac-12, Pac-4 right now. This is the president of Washington State. Disappointed to be losing their peers in the Pac-12. They want to stay there, but they do have scenarios that they're looking into, as I'm sure every school is already prepared for. Same thing with Stanford right here, mainstay, uh, Harvard of the West. So we'll see what happens with them. So overall, in one year, obviously this could change tomorrow. If nothing changes, this is the Pac-12 to the Pac-4. Uh, this is where you can see where they're at right now. So overall, that is hopefully a great overview for you. I wanted to say thank you for watching today. Again, if you like this content, please comment, please subscribe. It helps me grow the channel. In addition, as I continue moving forward with the silver lining, you'll be continuing to get notifications when these new videos come out. Breaking news, MMA, baseball, football, basketball, all the good good. The silver lining, out.